Good afternoon. Hope you're doing well on this Friday. This is David Rich Allen with Bounce and Thrive, Body, Mind, and Spirit. So I'm going to go ahead and um, shift gears a little bit. Been talking a lot about mindset, of course, because that plays a big factor. Spiritual being and physical body, mind connects together. If you can't get your mind straight or mindset straight, you're not going to work on any of the levels of Bounce and Thrive. <clears throat> but I'm going to work on a little bit, uh, a little different direction today. Uh, you can see from the title there, A Journey with the Journal of Food. Okay, what the heck does that mean? All right, it's a fancy way of saying, talking about a food journal. Now, before you poo-poo it, just kind of hear me out a little bit. Because probably a lot of people think about a food journal, you're simply making a list of what you eat and the calories you're taking in. Well, that's part of it, but let's make it a little more detailed. Because it can be very useful. If you're working on trying to lose some weight but not able to, um, this can poss possibly be, you know, I'm not a doctor, this is just educational information. This can possibly be very useful, especially if after eating, sometimes you get uh, gas, you feel bloated, you got diarrhea, you got fatigue, some of those factors in there. So with the food journal, and we're going to call this basically food and lifestyle journal, because something I give my uh, clients before I meet with them for the first time so they can track there. So here's something you can do with your food journal. I'm sure you can buy them. I'm sure there are apps or you can just use a notepad. <clears throat> but this is something for yourself and you can kind of learn something about it. One is... What before you eat on a scale from one to ten, how hungry are you? Just make a list of that. And then what's going on? What are your thoughts going through your head? What activities you got going on? This is all gonna play a factor. I'll describe that in a moment. So that's before you eat. Then what is it you're eating? How it was prepared, as in was it cooked, barbecue, steamed, fried? What are the portion sizes? And then after eating, what is your hunger level? One, zero to ten. And then how do you feel afterwards? All right, so how can this all play a factor? One is sometimes people can use food as a coping mechanism. They're not eating because they're hungry. They're eating because they're bored, looking for something to do, or simply because it says it's lunchtime, so it's need for me to eat, even though I'm not hungry. So that deals with how hungry you are and how hungry afterwards. Did what you eat satisfy you? Did you stuff yourself or were you doing okay? What activities got going on? Most of us have probably heard the saying, you are what you eat. Well, Cynthia Garcia, who founded uh, ITN, Institute of Transformation Institution, who I'm going through the program with, likes to say you are what you eat. Just think about it. I'm sure you can relate to this. I know I can. If you've had a really crappy day, you're not feeling too good, most of the time, at least again, probably a good chunk of it, you're not going to feel like eating healthy. You just want to grab whatever's convenient. So that's why she kind of references you eat what you are. So if you're not feeling good, you're not feeling good about yourself, you might not even make very good health, healthy choices. What are you doing during the time? One of the best things to do when you eat is to sit down quietly. Sit down and not have any distractions. Because if you're playing, if you're eating it on the go, you're inhaling it, you're eating at your desk while you're working, trying to get something done, you're doing this, you're watching something on TV, whatever it is, that can actually play a factor because you, you, might, have, you might have eaten the food too fast, where that can lead to indigestion, that can lead to the gut burn or whatever it is you got going on, that can lead to some issues there. So that's one of the reasons why you want to know what's taking place. The best ways to do it? Quiet. Food can actually be a spiritual experience if you choose to. Eating. Have some nice music on. Have a nice conversation with somebody. But I know I've been fully of this here. I'm a lot of times I eat by myself, so I like to have a movie on something on. But it's better off to not have it on. Just to concentrate on the food and enjoy the food. Making sure you're eating it. You're not taking a bite and swallowing it. Are you taking like a steam shovel and kind of shoveling in? Are you actually taking time to chew your food? Are you actually tasting it? Savor the flavors. This is where the experience comes in. And the same thing afterwards. What do you feel like after? What's going on here? But what tracking this down is, what your feelings are afterwards, as far as, again, with the digestion, the bloating, the gas, something like that. Now, there could be different directions of this. One could be, as I just mentioned, are you eating it too fast? Are you not in a good place to eat it? So you inhale it there. Are you, is it not a good quality food? The other part of that could be, you can find out some foods that don't really agree with you. Might be a certain type of carbohydrates or something there. Could be affecting you with giving you the gas, the diarrhea, indigestion, uh, fatigue, whatever it is. But, but you're not going to know that necessarily unless you write them down. So you can keep track of what you're eating and then what you feel like afterwards. Then you can start realizing, okay, this food is affecting me this way. And then you can start doing some experiments to figure out, do you need to cut down that particular food? Is it doesn't need to be in combination with something else because sometimes uh, food combining can make a difference. So there's a variety of factors there, but you're not going to know that unless you keep track of it. So that is one of the reasons to kind of keep a, take your journey by having a food journal and journey lifestyle journal so you can figure out. So again, what this is, 
your hunger level from zero to 10 before you eat. What are your activities, what you're feeling, what's going on before you eat? What is it you eat? How is it prepared? Portion size. And then after you eat, scale from zero to 10, how hungry you are afterwards, and then what are your feelings, activities going on afterwards? Keep track of that for a little period of time, and you might find some trends. This is, it. This is pretty good if you might have some issues going on, and you might be able to track them down. So, all right. So try that out. Let me know what your results are, or if you've done some type of food journal pre previously, or something like that, let me know what you have done at work for you. All right, so that's all we got for today. Enjoy the rest of your Friday as you get into the weekend or whenever you're catching this, and we will catch you next time. So take care, bounce into you, and bye-bye.